Hey everybody, I'm Matt Hill. I'm in Midland, Texas. I'm highlighting people in oil and gas that uh, just are, you know, really outstanding to me. I, you know, I follow them on LinkedIn or the rest of social media, and I'm like, you know what? I want to go interview them for myself. I know you've been on other shows, but introduce yourself, Sarah. Yeah, thanks. I'm Sarah Stogner. I'm an oil and gas lawyer, and I live here in the Permian Basin. How did you get into this oil and gas business, Sarah? So I went to LSU Law School. I loved my mineral law class. It was my favorite class in law school. And I started out at a, at a big firm called Jones Walker and did some downstream work for toxic torts and then started working with operators and representing them in insurance coverage disputes for blowouts or in layman's terms, right? As, as an operator, you go and you drill a new well, you buy an insurance policy in the case of a blowout. And then when you have a blowout and that insurance company decides it's cheaper to hire lawyers than it is to just pay the claim, they fight about it. So I used to sue insurance companies. I still do every once in a while. So you early on became a industry advocate and educating, you know, others on, you know, why our industry is, you know, great. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess it was about 2017 or 2018, I really started making a concerted effort on social media because I was disappointed in how our industry was portrayed. And, you know, we understand how great we are and all the cheap, reliable energy that we're providing. But we also know that we're essential. And I think we've kind of gotten arrogant and, and failed to brag about what we're doing and why we're so important. And now that we've got some challenges facing the industry, uh, people are really quick to say, oh, we knew it. You guys are big, bad, and horrible. And so I kind of came up with my oil and gas unicorn branding a few years ago and was like, you know what? Anything's possible. Anything's possible as long as you uh, have oil and gas to uh, make sure that the power's on, right? Yep. Uh, I don't want to go back to cooking with dung. Let's just say that. No way. <laughs> I'm not even a good cook anyway, so that would hurt. So right now I've been following you and uh, you're living out at this ranch that has some, you know, problems and, uh, you know, they came from, you know, our oil and gas, you know, industry, but we're the best to, you know, not fight it, but just fix find it. fix it. Yeah. Right. right. So how'd you even stumble across that? And then what are you doing right now? You know, you're on social media, you know, for, you know, showing, you know, what's out there, but how do we fix it? Yeah, so I mean, I think we have to have, and I keep saying it, intellectual honesty. And there is no such thing as green energy. Everything has costs and benefits. And we need to take a long-term, big picture approach for how are we going to continue to pro provide reliable, clean, inexpensive energy without sacrificing the long-term viability of our environment. Now, everybody that I know in oil and gas is, you know, an environmentalist. And I think we're the best ones at it. You know, we are stewards of our natural resources and we want them to be available for the rest of the world for forever generations, right? So you're running for Texas Railroad Commission. What What is the Texas Railroad Commission? Yeah, so the Texas Railroad Commission is the state entity that regulates oil and gas and surface mining in the state of Texas. And they've been around since the late 1800s. They no longer have any jurisdiction over railroads since I think about 2005. But um, yeah, they are the source of drilling permits, of protecting fresh water, of ensuring you know decommissioning and cleanup, injection permits, and if we don't fix it, I am convinced that there is enough animosity, hate, and misunderstanding in the world that we will be shut down. And we've seen the feds do it in Cushing, Oklahoma. We've seen them do it offshore. And if we don't take care of this, if Texans, knowledgeable oil and gas Texans, aren't regulating Texas oil and gas, we're in a world of hurt. So you want to get in there and roll up your sleeves, take a pay cut, and go help our industry and advocate for it and educate, but also partner with private sector, right? And go fix these problems. How can you do that? Right. So, you know, right now, one of the issues we're facing is orphaned wells, right? Uh, Louisiana just passed, I think, some really interesting legislation this last session, essentially incentivizing operators to take over orphaned wells. The initial revenue from production goes into a trust account for the P&A, and then they get some severance tax relief for the next couple of years. And it's a win-win, right? But what's happened is the Railroad Commission has approximately a $100 million annual budget. Wow. And of that, half of it is going to plugging orphaned wells. And it's absolutely insane to me that you give an entity or an agency responsibility for making sure that we don't have orphaned wells. And then when they fail at doing that, you give them $50 million a year to do it themselves when they weren't even capable of overseeing other people to do it. Are they hiring out the best people in our industry to go and plug those wells? Absolutely not. They're hiring the bottom of the barrel, cheapest day rate, cheapest turnkey. Um, it's a race to the bottom. Yeah, well, we can do a better job of that, and, and I know our industry wants to. Uh, 
what do you, what do you think is the future of the railroad commission? And you know, like, what do you think uh, some of the things are that we could do uh, as far as uh, you know policing our own people? Yeah. So you know, their their access to information is incredibly dated. That's another failed project, right? They, I think they've received over $20 million to update their mainframe computers and, and get all the microfiche digitized. You know, there was a flood several years ago and a lot of the really, really old records were lost. And so I think there needs to be a concerted effort. Like this well that's blowing out in Crane County right now is an old test well that we found through my private investigators and my private researchers. And we were able to give that to the Railroad Commission, who originally said it's a water well, good luck, landowner. I raised, jumped up and down and said, this is going to turn into yeah. another wink sink or Lake Bomer. This is not a landowner. Show me where this is a water well. No one could show it. It's obvious that it's not natural. We have no artesian water around here, right? And so um, after that happened, so then they came in, and then we continued digging, and we found out that it's an old Gulf test well. You know, it was a core sample dry hole. They, it's it's to about 1,400 feet, uh, and it probably doesn't have any casing or cement left in the hole. And if we don't handle it properly, we're, we're going to literally have another sinkhole. And um, it's a game of whack-a-mole, and so we have to do better. Do you think we are, the drill wells we're drilling now, do you think that our casing designs are going to hold up over the, you know, the, those wells you're talking about 50 years ago, what about the next 50 years? Yeah, I don't know. You know I think when we, when we do what we're supposed to do, and we have really good casing and really good cement jobs. And when you notice things early on, you can't ignore them. And you know what? Sometimes we do the best we can and you still have to plug a well because you've got communication. Um, you know. And so, I it, look, um, we, this is a great industry. Yeah. We, we're getting better every day. And I have no doubt that we continue, we will continue to innovate and we will continue to be able to economically extract hydrocarbons. What I'm not convinced of is that we have a handle on the full life cycle of these, this, these holes that we're putting in the ground and they don't ever go away. And 10,000 years from now, Right? I hope that we still have a viable industry, that we are taking a comprehensive approach to energy and making wise decisions based on an overall impact, need, demand. Right? If, if, if you want to be really intellectually honest, we should all probably have a couple solar panels and wind turbines out here in West Texas where it's sunny and windy on our back fences because the grid and the design of the grid is, is aging. And, right? you know, so, Backup power is always good for you know all of our industry. I mean, if we want to get harvest our oil and gas, why not also have that ability as well? Right, but that doesn't mean that we should be putting in massive land farm, you know, massive wind farms or massive solar farms where it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And we shouldn't be demonizing oil and gas where it does make sense. But we as an industry have got to hold the bad actors accountable. We need to continue to incentivize or actually incentivize, uh, you know, honestly the good ones. And we can figure this out together. We just got to get the bureaucrats and the lawyers and all the other people out of the way. I'm confident that if you get elected or when you get elected, you will get in there and not become a bureaucrat. You will continue to be an advocate and an educator for our industry. I appreciate you. How do uh, people get a hold of you and support you in your uh, efforts? Yeah, so my website is Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, the number four, rrc.com. And I'm on social media. You can find me on LinkedIn, Sarah Stogner. I'm the unicorn lawyer on TikTok. You know all that so it takes a lot i mean you really have stepped out there and i mean it's it's hard you know i, I i've done it now is you know putting yourself out there and saying man i care about this and you know not being afraid to you know speak up i'm, I'm impressed yeah well yeah thank you you know it's uh i've i've worked hard i'm i'm the rare situation where i am ingrained in this industry i feel like right once people know who i am they realize i really am one of us yeah. And uh, they're not getting rid of me, and the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And so I, uh, I'm not afraid of I'm not afraid of pissing people off. I do that okay. And I've got a lot of advocates and cheerleaders uh, on the sidelines rooting for me, helping me. And uh, we really are going to do better together. There you go. Get her elected to railroad commission. Hire as an attorney. You can't go wrong with this girl. Oh, thanks. Appreciate you very much. This is our show, everybody. Bye. See you next time. Thanks, Take care. Bye. God bless. Bye bye.